Welcome back. We're coding Reverse Eye, or the game Othello, in a sequence of videos. We're now at a point where we are doing the business logic for our game board. And by that, I mean we're enforcing the rules of the game on an otherwise sort of open board. In the last video, what we did is we calculated where the legal moves are on the server side and sent them to the client. In this video, we're going to adapt the client code so that it respects those legal moves and only allows the user to play on those places uh, that are allowed by the rules of the game. My name is Professor Don Patterson. Let's get started. So jumping over to Visual Studio Code, most of this work is going to be done on the client side. There is one bug we need to fix on the server, but let's start on client side. Bringing up main.js, we're interested in making sure that our legal moves are enforced. And the place where we're going to do that is starting off on the um, handler here for game update. So when we get an update from the server, one of the things that we were getting was the state of the board. Well, now we're also going to get the locations of the legal moves, and we need to change the way our update happens so that we respect that. So as we scroll down, we get to this point um, on our board, uh, on our logic, where we were counting the number of tokens that were in our board, and then we go through and we look to see if there are any changes. We look to see what the um, previous board was and then what the new board was, and we changed to, uh, our graphic in the space in order to reflect what that new graphic was. We came down to the build bottom, and after we've gone through all these if-else statements, we then constructed a, uh, we, we inserted that new image into place, and we had to put a time on the end of it to make sure that the animation still worked. So what I would like to do now is, um, after we've gone through every single, after we've gone through um, the logic of deciding what should be what graphics should be there, I want to change the interactivity. So we're going to move the interactivity out one step from this um, if statement. So if we come up here, um, the if statement starts here with the old board, if there's a change. And regardless of whether there's a change or not, we're going to do the following code. So after the date now and after this first insertion of the graphic, we're going to put a close curly bracket. And that means that this one down at the end is going to go away. And this code afterwards is going to be adjusted. And what we're going to do is, as we go through each one of our rows and columns, we're going to turn, first of all, turn, well, let me put a comment in here that says we're going to set up interactivity here, interactivity. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off any interactivity to get a clean slate. In addition to turning off the interactivity, I'm going to copy this um, hovered over removal and put it here as well. Let me save that and clean it up. So as we go through each wrong column, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn off interactivity and we're going to remove the hovered over text. That's the first thing that we're going to do. Now we need to put some new checks in here. We want to check to see if it's our turn. If it's not our turn, then nothing is going to be interactive. And so we'll do that as our first check. We'll say if the payload that we got back, the game item that's associated on that payload, and the indication of whose turn it is, if that's triple equals to my color, which is something that I'm keeping track of, then um, if it is my turn, it's my color, then I'm going to keep um, working on this interactivity bit here. Um, the next thing I need to know after whether or not, if it is my turn, in fact, my turn, then the next thing that I need to do is I need to identify if, a, um, if the current spot that I'm looking at um, is a legal move for me. So we're going to look at the current spot in our legal moves data structure. So we got our legal moves data structure back from the server, and it's storing the legal moves that it calculated in a two-dimensional array here. And we're currently looking at a particular row and a particular column. If the server tells us that that row and column triple equals my color, then that's something that's a legal move, and we want to add interactivity to that spot. As we check this equals, though, we have to be aware of the fact that my color is the whole string black or white, and the legal moves just has the first character B or W. So when we check for equality, we're just going to take my color, and we're going to look at the first character of that. So you do substring S-U-B-S-T-R 0 to 1. All right, so if it is my color, and if the legal moves indicates that I should um, be able to play there, then I'm going to keep all the text that I had before minus that if statement. So I'm going to add the hovered over class to it. I'm going to add the, the um, closure so that when I click on it, we'll send a play message there. And I'll come down here and I'll remove this else statement because we already cleared all the hovered overs afterwards. 
I believe I have to add two curly brackets after that. And let's see if that works when we save it up and um, format it. All right, it looks good. And, and actually, that's all we have to do to enforce our legal moves. Just have to clear all the, clear all the click actions, clear all the hovered overs, go through, make sure it's our turn. And if it is our turn, only add those actions to those places that the server says are legal moves. The one bug that we had that we had to address last time was in server.js. Um, when we were trying to figure out whether or not a location was valid to play, we had a supporter method called check line method, method match. It was going along and trying to identify whether or not a spot was on the other end of a line of flipping tokens. So if you want to play at a particular place, it's got to be next to an opposite color and it's got to be bounded by your own color. And if that were the case, then check line match would return true. There is just a case here, and I'm going to copy these three lines and put them here, that if we happen, we don't want that to include a line that has a space in it. So it has to be a line of colors. But if there is a space in between, we're going to return false. So that's one um, correction in server.js. So I'm going to go ahead and run this, and we'll see if we can get see if we can see the the effects. Running my server, let's start to see if I have any uh, typos. Not immediately, any showing up. Let's go over to my clients, and let's go ahead and enter a game. Well, that didn't seem to work right. Let's see what happened. I actually have a bug in, in main already. Wow. Okay, let's look at it. I'm looking in the inspect window on my browser and it says there's a bug on line 397. Oh, it's in it's in the uh, it's in my um, semicolon. It's in my uh, curly brackets. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh boy. Okay, it's in this tricky set of closures. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's go into the innermost one. Our payload is clean here. And our function is clean here, and our return is clean here. And then the end of our function is clean here, and then the definition is here, and then we call it here. And then this is the end of our click. Okay, so that's okay. Oh, there it is. There's an, no, that's clean. That's our if statement. And there's our if statement there. That's okay. Let's see, this should be our for statement. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, here it is. There's one too many at the end. Okay. So when we save it up, that should be aligned like that. All right, let's save that main.js server. That was a change to main.js, so we don't need to um, alter, we don't need to restart our server. Let's reload our lobby. There we go. Invite our other player. All right, a little slow at the start. I'm not sure what's going on there. All right, but we can see I am black and it's black's turn on the left. As I hover over the different locations, only those locations that are valid for black to play are showing up. That's great. I'm gonna try and play on an invalid location. None of those are working, that's great. If I try and play on a valid location, it allows me to play. Now that it's switched to white's turn, I can no longer see any valid moves and I'm not allowed to play anywhere on the left. But on the right, I'm allowed to play only those places where white is valid and no place else. And once I've clicked, no place else. And then back here, black. So it's good. We've got it all set up. We've got our tokens playing correctly. We don't have the flipping action. That'll be coming next. But what we've accomplished now is their server is able to calculate where our legal moves can be played. And our client is enforcing the legal plane of those moves. All right, good luck in implementing it yourself. Thank you for your attention.